What's up everyone? Justin, you're back with a new, it's been a long, long time since I've done a fantasy booking show. This is my fantasy booking of Royal Rumble 2024 fantasy booking of the Royal Rumble premium live event happening uh, pretty soon. Uh, about two or three weeks away. So first, I'm going to fantasy book. Uh, you got to kick off the Rumble because we got two Royal Rumbles matches to fantasy book. So you got to kick off the show with one of them. I will start with the men. I'm not going to go through all 30 names. I'm not going to do that this year. And uh, Shout out every 30 wrestler. Every 30 man in the Rumble. I will do it for the women. Because uh, I love the women. And I love women's wrestling. But I'm not going to pick 30 men to be entered in this year's Rumble. I've done that in the past. Where I have other fantasy uh, fantasy booking Royal Rumbles. Other years I've picked uh, 30 names for both Rumbles. But this year I only picked 30 names for the women. But the men. Let's get down to the men's Royal Rumble match. Here are the final four that I would have in it. The final four. Jey Uso. Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, and CM Punk. Now, uh, out fourth, who goes out first out of the final four, so he's out fourth. Or I guess you, I would should say he goes out first out of the final four, but Jay Uso's out. He's out first. So we're down to three. Drew, Cody, and Punk. Uh, out next, out second is Drew McIntyre. He's gone. He's out second. So we're down to the final two. Who's going to main event WrestleMania 40? One of the nights. Cody Rhodes or CM Punk? Cody's out. CM Punk wins the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble winner. CM Punk. Punk wins it. So that's the men's rumble. CM Punk is your winner. So now let's uh, fantasy book the Raw Women's World Championship matchup at the Royal Rumble 2024. Rhea Ripley defends in a rematch from day one. That just happened. Raw day one. Where we had Rhea Ripley defend against Ivy Nile. Well, I'm going to do it once again. I liked it uh, so much. I'm going to do it at the Rumble. Rhea Ripley defends the Raw Women's World Championship against... Or I don't think they call it the Raw Women's title. It's just the Women's World Championship. Rhea Ripley defends. She has been on absolute fire. She was great in 2023. She'll have a better 2024, I think. So Rhea Ripley defends against Ivy Nile. But this time it's two out of three falls. Two out of three falls matchup. And uh, Rhea wins and retains the women's championship. Women's world championship. Let's go to Seth Rollins. Not expected. I don't have him defending the World Heavyweight Championship. But what I do have is an angle, a storyline, backstage. Seth Rollins gets attacked by the Judgment Day. Gets the hell beaten out of him backstage. And he gets uh, brought out, carried to the ring by the Judgment Day. Damian Priest cashes in and wins. Damian Priest, your new world heavyweight champion after the backstage beatdown. But guess what? I would have uh, Priest cash in, win, 
and then he drops the title on Monday Night Raw right back to Seth freaking Rollins. He would drop the title back to him. Because in my opinion, uh, Priest is World Heavyweight Champion versus CM Punk. I'm not that interested in. I would rather see Rollins Punk. So Rollins would win back the title after the Rumble, after being cashed in. At least a priest could say, go down the record books and say he was a world heavyweight champion, at least, in WWE. In the future, I'm not against Damian Priest uh, being a two-time or three-time world champion and having a longer reign because him... Uh, Winning the title at the Rumble, let's say it's Saturday. My fantasy Rumble's a Saturday night. Well then, that's only two days. 48 hour title reign for Damian Priest and drops it to Rollins. But at the Rumble, Damian Priest, your new world heavyweight champion and cashes in successfully. Thanks to the Judgment Day's help in the beatdown. I'm Rollins backstage. Now, uh, let's go to the Women's Rumble. And then, I'm going to have the uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship matchup. But, uh, fantasy booking. The Women's 2024 Royal Rumble. Here we go, number one. Number one. Is it a surprise? Is it a former... A diva, a former legend, or is it somebody new from NXT? Number one is Cora Jade. I'm a big fan of her. And uh, she should be called up, if not in the Rumble, to be on the main roster for good, then she should be caught up. On uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. Um, and by the way, last year's uh, Raw after WrestleMania was not great. We got like no debuts. Just Brock turning on Cody, which was uh, not great. I didn't hate it, but it was not a great Raw after WrestleMania. And every Raw after WrestleMania should be great. And this year under Triple H, hopefully Vince has no say ever in creative. But, uh, yeah, it should be way, way better with Triple H is head of creative. Because we all know last year all those reports uh, came out that Vince rewrote the show a whole bunch and booked a lot of it. Or changed a whole bunch of it. And... Just rebooked it to have Brock turn on Cody. But anyways, uh, number one, Core Jade in the Women's Rumble. Number two, is it a surprise? Is it a debut from NXT? Is it some woman for, from Raw or SmackDown? No, it's a returning legend. AJ Lee, number two. Core Jade loved uh, CM Punk growing up. Still does love him. It's uh, obvious. Core Jade was like a CM Punk uh, super fan. Uh, look it up. She was like kind of like a CM Punk stalker. I mean, she went to a whole bunch of his autograph signings when he was in the UFC. She showed up at a UFC press conference, got to ask him a question. A young Core Jade. She was just a super fan. I don't think she's a stalker. I hope not. But uh, anyways. All these women I'm a fan of. That I put in the women's uh, 2024 Rumble. I'm a fan of all of them. I'm a fan of a ton of wrestlers. But I would never go that far ever to be a stalker of wrestlers that is just wrong and fucking crazy and if you are a stalker type fan uh, you should be locked the fuck up 
If you like stock uh, wrestlers and think you deserve to stalk them because you watch them on TV, no, you don't deserve to do that. But uh, AJ Lee number two, Core J number one, that face off, I would love to see it in that uh, matchup for a little while. Number three. NXT, Tatum Paxley, get her in the rumble. Tatum Paxley, number three. Number four, Zia Lee, where, she, where has she been? I don't know, she's missing again from TV. Number five, Piper Nevin. Number six, Katrina. Or Katana, not Katrina, Kat, Katana Chance. I think that's how you say her name. The former Casey uh, Canzaro. Katana Chance. Number six. One of the current women's uh, tag team champions. Number seven. Former longtime women's tag team champion. Number seven. Chelsea Green. Big fan of her. Again, I'm a big fan of all these women I put in it. Just about. Number eight. Kaden Carter, also women's uh, current tag team champion. Number nine, Bianca Belair. And Bianca, number nine, she lasts a long time, I'll tell you right now. She lasts up until the end, close to the end and finish. Number 10, after Bianca, number 10, Bailey. Number 10, Bailey. Number 11, a returning. I doubt she returns in the Rumble, but this is fantasy booking of the Rumble. Number 11, Sasha Banks, the boss. I would love to see her back. Does she need to come back? Uh, no, because she's accomplished everything just about in WWE except win a women's Rumble. But still, I... I prefer Sasha in WWE over AEW. That's just me. But uh, number 11, Sasha Banks, right after Bailey. That'd be a huge surprise, get a huge pop. But again, this is fantasy booking. It's not going to happen in real life. And I wish all these stupid uh, wrestling reporters and dirt sheet writers stopped spoiling shit. They're all reporting Sasha's expected to be on AEW Wednesday from uh, Daly's place. I think that's in Jacksonville, I believe. The uh, the little arena Daly's place that the Khans own, or Tony Khan's dad owns, or he bought it. I don't know who owns it, but the Khans own it. Why, why Why? they got to do that? Why they got to spoil shit and say Sasha is expected to appear? They said that about last week's AEW, the first one of the year, the first Dynamite. Guess what? She didn't show. If, uh, I'll just say this. I don't like spoilers. I hate them. I would rather be surprised, but I have heard Sasha's expected on Dynamite. On uh, tomorrow's Dynamite. If you're watching this video later, I'm doing it on January, whatever it is. Let me check the date. I think it's the 8th or 9th. It's the 9th. So January 9th, uh, Sasha's expected to be on AEW January 10th, 2024. I don't know if she will be, but that's what they're claiming. The dirt sheets. And everybody that wants views or dirt sheet reporters and people that have YouTube channels that want views are just reporting Sasha's going to be on AEW. Number 12, after Sasha, this woman I really hope comes to WWE. I hope she comes to the big time, the major leagues, and doesn't go to AEW. That's just me personally. I would rather have her in WWE. I think Triple H would book her well. And AEW would not book her that great. 
But uh, after Sasha Banks, number 12, I don't, she's still under contract, but this is fantasy booking. I think she's under contract with Stardom New Japan until March. But this fantasy booking. Number 12. Julia, get Julia in the fucking WWE. Please, Triple H, sign Julia. Get her in the fucking company. I don't care if she barely knows English. She's learning it. But she doesn't have to even know it for me to still be a fan of her. But, uh... She will learn it if she goes to WWE because how she, she maybe wants to cut her own promos. I don't know. But you don't got to speak English to be in the fucking company or to be a wrestler in WWE. They could do what they're doing with Nakamura. Use subtitles. Doing what they're doing with Asuka, Kyrie Sane, showing subtitles. It's a lot better for... Japanese and foreign talents to be able to speak their own damn language anyways. And you could just use subtitles for the fans to read. Doesn't bother me at all to read subtitles. For movies, uh, I don't like doing that really. When a whole movie is uh, subtitles from another country, I really don't like that. Silent films also are, I fucking hate silent films. And I don't watch them anyways. But uh, number 12, Julia fucking sign her. Please, WWE in 2024 sign Julia. She has the look. She has the talent in the ring. She looks like a fucking star. And uh, I would like to see so many dream matches. J Julia against Asuka. Julia Becky. Julia Bailey. Julia Charlotte. Julia Shotzi. Julia Bianca. Julia Rhea Ripley. So many. Julia Eel Sky. Holy shit. So many dream matches. I haven't watched that many Julia matches under... Like three or four. But from what I've seen of her work, she's damn good. And she has it factor. And she could be a major, major star in WWE. She's already a big star in Japan. Number 12, Julia. Number 13. Even if uh, Julia doesn't go to WWE, I will still always put her over. I'm a fan of her. Number 13, is uh, Jade Carhill. Jade Carhill, number 13, makes her main roster J debut. Jade is number 13. What a star-studded uh, rumble I've booked. Number 11, Sasha. 12, Julia. 13, Jade. Those three women right there are big stars. Again, WWE does not need Sasha at all. If she's really asking for way too much uh, money, more money than Charlotte just got for a new contract. I think Charlotte, I don't know what she's getting paid. Five million a year, maybe less. I don't know. Or she wants more than Becky. Because Becky is going to get a hell of a lot of money in 2024 from a new contract. Her husband, Seth. Freaking Rollins, he's going to get a ton of money also, and he should. Becky should get 5 or $10 million. Seth also, and Charlotte, whatever she got, I don't know. But it was a big up in pay for Charlotte. Sasha, it's been reported she wanted more than Charlotte. Way more than Charlotte got. I don't know if Sasha's worth that much. Uh, not really. You don't need Sasha. You don't need to overpay her. When you could get Julia and Jade is coming in any time now. Probably at the Rumble. We'll see Jade in real life. In the Fantasy Rumble that I booked, Jade is number 13. Number 14, Roxanne Perez. She was in last year's Rumble. Maybe you could call her up for good in uh, this year's. 
Number 15, Indy Hartwell. Number 16, Nia Jax. Number 17, I don't know where this woman has been. Maybe she's released, but I never heard she got released. I hope she's still in the company, but uh, number 17, Wendy Chu. Where has she been? I don't know. Maybe she's training women at the PC and helping out. I don't know. Number 18, returning to the ring from injury, Dakota Kai. Number 18, love her, big fan of her. Number 19, Mia Yim. She had a killer match with uh, Eel Sky recently on last week's SmackDown for the women's title. It was a hell of a match. Number 20, returning to WWE, maybe for one night only at the Rumble 2024. Also, she could be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Why the hell not? Number 20, Mickey James. Number 21, Isla Dawn. She's got a great fucking look. Isla Dawn. She looks like a star. Number 22, Raquel. Is it Rodriguez or Raquel Gonzalez? I forget. But Raquel is number 22. Number 23, Liv fucking Morgan. I love Liv. Big fan of Liv. Always have been, always will be since I first saw her in NXT. Just her personality, her wrestling style. I love Liv Morgan. She's great. That was a fucking joke how she was arrested and charged with possession of marijuana. Florida's fucked up. They really go after marijuana in Florida. So I know a lot of wrestlers live in Florida. If you want to smoke... I would say don't fucking go out of your house with marijuana and drive on it. Because you'll get pulled over probably. And uh, I don't care Liv was driving erratically. She did not injure anybody. She had a tiny bit of weed. It was a joke that she fucking got arrested. It's And I don't smoke. And I never will. Not into smoking. I'm straight edge, anyways, but uh, I'm not against it at all because uh, I'll just say I got family members that really need to smoke, or else they uh, would turn to alcohol. And trust me, alcohol is worse, and it's sold on every goddamn street corner you can get alcohol. It's a fucking joke. That pot is not legal in every fucking state in America and the world. I don't know if it's legal in London or UK, but anybody in UK or London, uh, tell me in the comments. Can you get pot over there? Is it legal? I don't know. I believe it is in Amsterdam. But that's all I know, I think. Anyways, live... She have never been arrested. I don't care if they drop the charge to misdemeanor. It's a joke that she was arrested for having a little bit of pot. A little bit of weed. She should have got slapped with a fine and a warning. And that's it. But, uh, goddamn, she looked great in her mugshot. Number 23, Liv Morgan returning in... She'll get a huge pop whenever she's back. Liv is fucking loved by the fans. And the WWE Universe loves Liv. I love her. Number 24, Alba Fire. Number 25 from NXT, Tiffany Stratton. Big fan of her. She has a bright future. Number 26, the man, Becky Lynch. 26. Number 27, one of my favorites, uh, Shotzi. Number 28, Lola Vice from NXT. Number 29, Asuka. There's one of my Asuka shirts. I love Asuka to death. She's currently still my favorite wrestler and probably always will be. Number 29, Asuka. 
Number 30, another Damage Control member returned last November, Kyrie Sane. Number 30. Now let's get down to the final four women. The final four women in the Royal Rumble 2024. Bianca Belair, Bailey, Jade, and Becky Lynch are the final four. Jade, Becky, Bailey, Bianca. Now, uh, who goes out first? I would out of the final four. I would put out Jade first. Who goes out second? Down to three. Down to Bailey, Bianca, Becky. The Triple B's. That's uh, pretty funny. Bailey, Bianca, Becky. So, uh, yeah. Out next is Bianca Belair. Is out second. Down to the final two. Becky, Lynch, and Bailey. Who wins? Becky Lynch wins a 2024 Women's Rumble. I love Bailey to death. I have a Bailey shirt here. Let me see if I can get it. Here it is. I love Bailey. This is an older shirt, but uh, Bailey is my role model. I love her. She's great. She's fucking awesome. I love Bailey, but she's uh, never, sadly, never won a rumble. I just think uh, it's a better, better choice, better pick to have. Becky Lynch win the Women's Rumble in 2024. Go on to WrestleMania to, to face Rhea Ripley. That's what I would do. Now, if they want to, in real life, if they want to, I, I think Becky's going to win, I believe. She's my pick, at least, on this fantasy booking show. Becky wins in real life. I'm picking Becky also. But, uh,. Yeah, they could put over Bailey to shock everybody. It'd be a great surprise. Who knows? They could put over Jade. Maybe it could be Jade and Rhea Ripley. I don't think Jade's ready for a WrestleMania main event yet. Rhea could carry her, but the match would probably not be that great. It definitely wouldn't live up to Charlotte Rhea last year. It was great. Jade is just, she's still a rookie. So Jade Rhea would not be that great. Unless they worked out a match in the ring ahead of time. Like at the PC if they kept doing their match like over and over. Maybe it could be great if they kept rehearsing it. I don't know. Jade is a great athlete. Jade made my final four. Again, the final four was Jade, Bailey, Becky, Bianca. Came down to Bailey and Becky. Becky wins the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble. Becky Lynch wins. Now, I thought I was done, but I'm not. Uh, more fantasy booking of the Royal Rumble 2024. The final match, the main event. For the undisputed Universal WWE Championship, Roman Reigns defends against, yes, I would do the same match, a fatal four-way. Why the hell not? Steal it. I'll steal it. Versus LA Knight, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton. I don't know if they're going to do this at the real event. I doubt it, but it would be good. It would be shocking. If Roman loses, in real life, I don't see him losing. But it's possible. It's like, I don't know. I say that about every Roman title match. It's like 50-50 could win or lose, but who knows. Fantasy booking. Fatal 4-Way, I would have Roman lose to Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Would have 15 title reigns then, I think. I think he's on 14 world title reigns. So he'd be up to 15, close to Ric Flair's 16. 
Even though Ric Flair probably had the world title like over 20 times, I believe, because he lost it a lot. In Puerto Rico and overseas, I think. So he had more than 16 title reigns, but that's what they recognize. WWE and wrestling has always said Rick or WCW, WWF, WWE has always said Ric Flair 16 time world champion. But in real life, I believe he's like over 20 time champion. Randy Orton wins the Undisputed Universal Championship. The Viper Randy Orton wins the title. I'll tell you one thing, it'd be shocking and it'd get a huge pop. And how does he win? Well, the ref is knocked out. The rocks, music hits, he runs down to the ring. Let's say that everybody's laid out almost. Also, the ref laid out. The Rock gets in the ring, faces off with Roman. Rock bottoms Roman, costs Roman the title. The Rock costs Roman. Randy Orton pins Roman. Referee wakes up one, two, three. The Rock again costs Roman the Universal, uh, Undisputed Universal Championship. So, Roman's pissed. He's no longer champ. That would set up Rock and Roman for Elimination Chamber. That's what I would do. Non-title. And then at WrestleMania, I would do Cody and uh, Randy. Or Roman, Cody, Randy for the title at WrestleMania. So Rock costs Roman. The Undisputed Universal Championship. That set up a rock and roll in an elimination chamber. And again, <coughs> excuse me, I coughed and then had a hiccup. Um, that would then set up Cody going after the title against Randy. And you could add Roman to it, something like that. And I'd have Cody win the title at WrestleMania and finish his damn story already. But, uh, yeah. CM Punk wins the men's rumble. Becky wins the women's. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye for now, everybody. That's my fantasy booking of the Royal Rumble 2024 premium live event.